Um, all right, team, welcome to our Zoom. Um, let's say September 28th. And our speaker tonight, Bria, she's going to kill it. She always does. Um, forgive me, I'm not feeling very well today. So that's just how it goes. But um, we are in the last week of the month. So if you're thinking about Success Club and all those other things, um, it's not too late to lock it in. So let's go ahead and I'm going to screen share really quick and show. Oops, do our quick shout out. Ooh, hold on. Went to the wrong screen. And let me manage these. Okay, let's see here. Oops. There we go. Can you see that? Picture of Bria. Check out our Success Club board. This is killer. I'm super excited. Y'all want to be in Success Club? You want to be in Success Club 10 so you can get Shaco lead? Emma, I don't see anything. Yeah, I don't either, Emma. Sorry. You don't? Is it not working? I just see your box that says, like, it's just your box with the slideshow, but it doesn't show it. Okay. <laughs> the actual slide. Carrie, let me find where it went. Okay. Can you see it now? Nope. Okay, maybe it's not working. Oh, well, I'll post it in our group page, and then you can see it. But it, we have a huge list of Success Club people, the most we've ever had, which is really exciting. Um, don't forget that there's Success Club promotion. If you hit Success Club 5, you're going to get all the P90X stuff. And if you hit um, Success Club 5, and then also sign a coach between um, – from the last call, which was the 22nd of September through the end of the month, then you get to have the cute little arrow ring. I'll ship that to you. If you're a lifetime diamond or higher, it has to be you plus two, okay? So you and two of your coaches hit Success Club 5. And then you also have to sign a new coach. And so um, there's some awesome promotions of why you want to get in Success Club. Remember, this is a bit basic benchmark goal um, that we want to hit every single month, okay? And then um, just as a little tip that Amy shared today that I loved, I wanted to share with you guys is that um, we should approach recruiting with the same tenacity and for, uh, ferocity that we do uh, success club and everything else like our fitness and, and things like that because this opportunity is so incredible for so many people and we can't succeed on our own that we want to keep moving forward and, and having our movement move forward. I think about it like if I wouldn't have ever recruited, then my whole, all of my dreams would have stopped with me, you know, and then I think about the individual people on the team and who's been affected by this movement and how different their lives would be, um, you know, if I didn't recruit their coach and their coach didn't recruit them and it goes on down the line. But it's not just about having a new coach on your team. It's about what that does to their life and their family and how it, like I get messages literally every single day of either somebody having incredible success with their um, health and fitness goals or they're having, um, they're paying off a credit card or they paid off a student loan or they're taking, I get little things like, I'm taking my husband out to dinner tonight, I'm so excited, or look what I just treated myself to at Target, you know, or whatever. I had one yesterday of somebody who's like, I finally hired a cleaning lady. So, I mean, and that stuff just is like, it doesn't seem like a big deal, you know, whether you take it or leave it, but it is like if you have your stressed out mommy that stays home, you having a cleaning lady come in just totally lifts your spirits, right, mamas? <laughs> I know it did for me. I hired one a couple times, but um, now I have Will. He's my full time cleaning lady. It's awesome. Um, anyway, <laughs> but it just gives us the things like I never would be where I'm at in life if I if Teresa wouldn't have consistently posted her stuff and you guys know it's completely changed everything and it's the big things and the little things like the other day it was my birthday and my brother's uh, he works super hard such a hard worker and he's like what did you do today I'm like I just kind of stayed home I didn't really want to do anything I just took some time for me he's like really you didn't like go out to eat or da -da -da. I'm like well, I can kind of go shopping and out to eat whenever I want, or I can go get a massage when I want. So, you know, I just wanted to stay home. And he's like, oh, you be, <laughs> and he called me the B word. But I was like, that is, it's awesome that that can become a reality that you really can 
not need a vacation for your life. Like you, you can actually love your days. Like you love them. And I, I love to work. And so I, I work when I want to, but then I shut it off when I'm ready to. And it's so cool that that is the reality. And I'm not punching a clock and that I'm not answering to a boss or like praying he gives me my birthday off. You know what I mean? So we all can have that. And so many people want that anyway. Okay. So, um, Go ahead and type in the chat something that's a good news minute that you're doing. I got a Fit Club location, y'all. It's at my house. Did you see that? It was so cool. Will's like, hey, can I spend a yada yada amount to go get new floor mats for the gym and new mirrors and we need to increase our weights? And I was like, all right. And he just came back and busted the whole thing out. So Fit Club starts Saturday. I'm so excited. You put it out in the world and you'll find a way, right? That's how it goes. You just keep working at it. That's been a goal of mine for about five years now. Um, so one of your challengers wants to be a coach. That's awesome. Added four to the What is Coaching group. I challenged uh, the people in the em Emerald to Diamond group to add five people today to that group. We'll see. I have a lot of your my Diamonds coaches in there, by the way. So make sure you follow up with them. Okay. That's all the good news we have, really. You guys... That was not a lot of good news. Help me out, sisters, dudes. There we go. Shima hit Success Club her first in her first month as a coach. Good job. Katie is on the call. Woo woo. Good job. All right, keep going, y'all. Um, what else was I gonna say? I don't know. I can't remember. All right, let me introduce Bria to you. Do we need, need an introduction for Bria? It's like Carl Eichler visiting, right? I need to introduce Bria. <laughs> on. That's just ridiculous. <laughs> Bria's awesome. She's the most humble person ever. And because Bria isn't the, you know the thing, don't talk about it, be about it. She is a be about it girl. Like she's not going to say it and have it not be done. Um, she's always willing to try new things, which I love, but she keeps the foundation of the most important things and uh, has really mastered the foundation of this business. And then on, on top of that, she found her voice, you know, as a coach and then like has layered up, you know, different things on there with uh, taking risks and trying new things and empowering her leaders. She just does a really great job of um, keeping this ground. But also with being willing to jump and then find her wings on the way down, which is very important. So, Bria is from Canada. She's a top Yay. coach and she represents the Great White North. And where are you at in Canada as far as rank goes? Are you number 10? No, not right now. I am in the top 30, I think. Um, still crazy good. Yeah, that's amazing. And you're number, you. what, 200 in the company? Yeah, yeah, like 205, I think. That's awesome. So she's number 205 out of, there's currently 425,000 coaches. Look at that many. Holy jeez. I didn't I realize. That for just a minute. So on our team, we have coaches that are in the top 0.001%. So amazing, right? And she just, you've been with me now two years? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, two and a half, really. Yeah. <laughs> Two and a half. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Anyway, I'm going to let you go ahead and take over because you're, you're going to kill it and I am going to mute out. Go girl. Okay. Thank you, Emma. I'm so happy to be on here with you guys tonight. And I apologize. I made notes because sometimes I get really nervous talking in front of everyone. So, um, and I need to just remind myself, it's like, I'm just talking to one person here or friends anyway, but, uh, anyway, I, I know I shared a little bit about my story. Um, in the FFP in a video, but I did start as a coach, as a discount coach really in January, 2013. And I kind of dabbled a little bit and then found out we were moving back to Canada. So I put everything on the back burner and, um, made the move and got settled in with the kids. And then I, and then I sort of <clears throat> decided it was time to dive in. Uh, and that, what I wanted to share with you guys today, when I was thinking about what to talk about and um, what could be helpful. I just thought, you know, I thought I would try to boil down like the, the most important things that I think have been keys to my success 
and also maybe give along an action item with them. Um, so hopefully you, if you relate to it, you can take it and implement it for yourself. So that is what I'm going to cover tonight. And please feel free to ask questions if you have any as you go, but I probably won't notice them as if you type them. So maybe wait till the end because I'll get distracted. Um, so the first thing I wanted to share with you guys that I think was, was a huge um, factor in starting the ball off for my success was deciding to commit. And I want to put like next to that slash for life. Um, I don't, I'm sure you're like me. I feel like on every national wake up call I hear, um, I hear ta all the top coaches being like, yeah, I just had this aha moment or this real moment where, you know, like it all clicked and came together. And I think in the beginning I was like, when's that going to happen? <laughs> you know, what's, when is that going to happen to me? Is it going to be like a lightning bolt or whatever it was? But I think for me, what I really realized that actually meant was less about having this like ding light bulb and more about, um, really looking at this opportunity, believing that it is something that I could do too. And I just have to say quickly, like anyone can do this. So I hope that you are believing that you can do this because it is, it is just not a, like, it's a long-term thing. It's, you just have to believe that you can do it because anyone can. Um, we've seen people from all walks of life to do it, but I think it's when you, when you truly kind of look at it and be like, I believe in this and I want to make this happen. And it's not going to be something that I just give six months to, like it's going to be something that I implement into my life. And I think it's when you are clear on what this opportunity is that you seriously want it and that you believe in it and that you're ready to make the necessary sacrifices. So no matter how busy, you know, your life is, I know there's things in your life that um, if this is a priority, you'll X those out. And for me, I think when I really looked at the, you know, my reality, like a husband that travels a lot, you know, two young kids, I was home, I was the one responsible for them 24 hours a day. Even though I felt tired and exhausted, I was still easily spending the last like hour and a half of my night in front of the TV or doing something to unwind or whatever that was. So when I think when I really realized that, that this was something that I believed could happen for me and that this was something that I wanted, I started to cut out those little bits. And that was sort of my aha moment, I guess, was when I really realized like, okay, I'm going to make these sacrifices to put towards this. And it's the same in anyone's fitness journey, right? Like you see your challengers, like if you really want to make a change, because change is hard, you can't just like come into this and keep it to yourself and think, Oh, I'm just going to be a coach privately until maybe it gets really successful and then tell people about it. I think you really need to commit to your fitness program if you're trying to lose weight or your nutrition and you got to share it with people and you have to be open about it because only then will you be honest enough to, I think, make the sacrifices that you need. So I think that was my first real um, takeaway that I wanted to share with you that was big for me. And the action item I want to leave you with is to write down what you want. Take some time to write down what you want and then write down what you are willing to sacrifice in your life. Um, so whether it is actually like taking a good hard look at all the things that you do in your life, being real honest about it, and, and then just highlighting the things that you could give up a little in order to make things happen in the business and do the necessary things. Um, and I'll continue to talk about it later, but like, I think the coolest part about this opportunity is that they literally tell you, like they give you a roadmap of what you need to do. And you kind of hear it again. I'm sure I'll repeat some of the things, but like Beachbody gives you a roadmap, like FFP gives you a roadmap, whoever your upline sponsor is, I'm sure they give you a roadmap specifically of the things you need to do to be successful. Um, and you just have to do it, but it's finding that time and that consistency in your life to do it. So that was my, my number one. My number two is to get comfortable talking to people um, and find your strength in that. Uh, so I'm sure I come across quite outgoing. I think a lot of people tell me they think I know the whole neighborhood, but even though I think I've always been a friendly person, I still felt I, you know, <laughs> it's hard to talk to a lot of people or it's hard to sometimes put yourself out there, but you have to remember that this whole thing about being a coaching, like this is not about selling um, 
a tangible item, even though we have like a challenge pack. This is so much more about selling or sharing the emotion and the opportunity that comes along with making these decisions in your life, choosing a challenge pack, choosing to push play every day, choosing to nourish yourself properly and what's going to happen in the end of that. So I think it's really important that we're always aware of, of, of that connection with people and how important it is to connect with people. Um, because I think without that, I mean, you might get a few people to decide to purchase a challenge pack or decide to become a coach, but it's just not going to last. So you really have to connect with people. You have to be able to put yourself out there. Um, so, and what helped me, I think, is taking a look at what you're most comfortable doing. For me, it really is, I am most comfortable one-on-one -on -one talking to people. You might be most comfortable talking to people on Facebook in Messenger. And that's great, too, because there's lots of successful coaches that, that you know, really use to that way to get to themselves. But find that one thing and start there. Um, and I think... <laughs> Um, along with that, I think what's really important that I learned and really did not do a very good job of in the beginning was taking that connection into your groups, into your free group, into your challenge group, into your recruiting event group, whatever it is, you can't just set up this group, put the people in it and like, you know, post daily. I think you really need to be connecting with people along their journey outside of that group in personal message and, and building your friendship and your relationship. You know, I think one of my favorite takeaways so far, one of my, the best parts about this whole job for me has been the connections I've made and the friendships I've made and the amazing people that are on this team and on my team. Um, and that doesn't come from, like, doesn't come by accident. I think it comes by getting to know people over time and building on that relationship. So get comfortable talking to people, get comfortable connecting with people. You have to master that skill and push yourself, but start with where it is that you're most comfortable. If you're most comfortable, you know, behind the scenes a little, that's okay. Just do more of it. Do a lot of it. Um, because I'll share a story with you that I heard recently. Uh, I think that, um, I, another coach in Canada shared, she was at um, a conference where the GoPro guy was talking. I don't know why I can't remember his name. I have a book here by him. Um, anyway, he, I think he was in this room and there were a lot of like coach type people in the room and a lot of six figure earners. And he asked the six figure earners um, how many people they typically, you know, tell their coaches or how many people they typically talk, yeah, tell their coaches to talk to in, in a month. And many of the coaches like us, you know, I think kind of came to a consensus of about, you know, okay, well, you want to make sure you're talking to 30 people in order to hit your success club five. And so everyone came to that consensus. And then he says there were a lot of like surgeons and doctors in the room. And he said, how many people do you talk to and see in a month? And that number was 500 on average. And not that I think we need to speak to 500 people, but I think we need to realize how many people you actually need to be connecting with in your life on a daily basis. And it really should be more than 30 a month. It really should be more like 100 a month, at least pushing towards that. It doesn't have to be like an in invite to those people, but it needs to be an adding to my network. It needs to be a let's go for a walk. You need to push yourself and maybe it's a matter of um, okay, this month I talked to 20. So next month I need to talk to 25. Make it a measurable thing for you and, and push yourself to talk to more people. Because I know it feels like you're talking to a lot of people, but you probably aren't talking to as many as you'd like to. And that was a big aha moment for me that has changed um, my business and I think made a big difference in my ability to have hit bigger success club numbers. How many people I'm trying to connect with and relationships I'm building on a daily basis. Um, so my takeaway, my action item is to tap into your inner playa. <laughs> and um, not that I'm condoning playa behavior, but I'm saying that when you are out at the park, make the first move. You know, if you're out of the playground, if you're standing in an elevator alone, like don't, like, it's hard. My heart starts to beat. It's a lot easier now than it wasn't in the beginning. My heart would start to beat, like knowing I had to like try to put myself out there. You're not trying to sell them something. Just connect with them. You know, make sure if you're walking your dog next to someone else that you say hi and you don't just kind of like zone in and walk past. So that is my action item for you is to step out of your comfort zone and start tracking how many people, how many little connections with people that you're actually making in a week and push yourself next month or next week to do more. Um, 
Okay, so my third item that I want to share with you is about consistency. And I know you hear about this all the time, but I have learned in this that nothing beats consistency in this business. Not skill, not charisma, not a big network or fancy posts that you can make. Nothing will beat consistency. It will win out every time. If you want to be successful, to be consistent and it's measurable if you want to be a little successful in this be a little consistent if you want to be really successful in this you have to be consistent every single day and I know that that's hard it's no different than um, and I always try to remind these are things I when I'm talking to you guys I think I'm, this is how I talk to myself um, I know that like when you're trying to lose weight or you're trying to reach a goal in your fitness like it's it's not difficult it's a very simple formula but it's hard because you have to be consistent that is where is that is where it's hard for people so get really good at that you know no matter what be do the things that have to be done consistently in your business um, and recognize that when you do them when you do them when other people aren't doing them and when you do them when you don't want to do them that is what is bringing you to success. Not doing them when they're easy, not doing them when everyone else is doing it. Doing it for you when it is inconvenient is the most important thing you can do for your business and for the success that you really want. Um, and just along with that, I remember in you know, my early days, Emma saying, you know, you have to look at this like it takes a lot of energy to get an airplane up and going um, and all that energy and the momentum. But once it's up, it doesn't take as much. And I really like that for, for like this whole concept of being consistent. It, the first six months of being a coach in a way is, is one of the hardest because it's testing your belief. It's testing your confidence in yourself and it's testing, I think your tenacity, your ability to, to like push through even when it's really hard. That first six months to a year is the hardest part. Um, and even the first, the first to diamond is hard because you're really still establishing yourself. But if, I can, if you can just push through and do it, even when you don't know that you're getting there, even when you don't see it necessarily, and get your airplane up off the ground, it's going to be so much easier. Um, and I think for me, whenever I hear, you know, these superstar coaches talking, I always think, um, like, superstar success, just, it doesn't come easily. Like, that's why this whole network of 425,000 coaches aren't already there. I mean, I think of last year of over 300,000 coaches, there weren't even 200 elite coaches in that number, like 160. So you can see it's not an easy thing, but that's because being consistent is not easy. But you can do it because it's also, sorry, it's not it's not difficult at the same time. So I thought for my action item for this one, because this one I'm super passionate about, um, is that I would just get, tell you that very specifically, no matter what, what I do every single, like what my no matter what are, that I won't go to bed with. And I know you've heard all of these before, but I am fierce in doing this. And it's been huge in hitting success club for me every single month. Um, because every single thing ties together in your business. So no matter what, I post to social media three posts each day. And I'll tell you right now, when I say each day, these are the things I do five days a week. I do things five days a week on Saturdays and Sundays. I really keep to my family. I always work out. I always drink Shakeology. I always read my personal development. Um, and I always post to my groups and respond to messages. But these other things, I'm just really fierce in doing five days a week. It doesn't even have to be seven days. I post three times to social media each day. I add three new contacts, no matter what. I find three and they get every friend request from me. It's happening. Um, I, I, um, I create three brand new relationship messages. So this was new for me this year when I started expanding my like page. I go to my like page and anyone who has liked or commented on a post that I've done that is not my friend, I send them a friend request. And when they accept, those are my brand new friend messages that I send. I send three brand new friend messages and then I also send three old relationship messages. So messages to people that I haven't talked to in a really long time or maybe, you know, in at least six months I haven't talked to, just to kind of try to breathe life into our friendship again. 
and those two last things have been, I think, what has helped me always get above Success Club 15 every single month. It's combining of those two, of the new relationships and continuing. So in, in essence, I'm, I'm talking to six people a day and building six new relationships a day. Um, and then I track my invites no matter what I write down. If I actually invite someone or I think that's where it's going, I always write down their name in like my challenge group list. And then I always return messages every 24 hours, within 24 hours, no matter what. And that can be hard because I know some days it's like you get a lot of messages. Um, but that, those, are, those are my no matter what's. And, and as for inviting, I think you could also be inviting three a day. I find it easier when I'm gearing up to, um, to host a challenge group. I'll go, go to that challenge group list of all the people that I've started to build relationships with and have started to talk to fitness and nutrition about. And I will just, I'll do a huge um, invite that way, like individual invites, but I find it easy for me to invite like 30 people that way as opposed to um, three a day, but that's just me. Okay, sorry, number four. <laughs> I only have five, I'm getting through it, I'm sorry. Um, number four is um, a PD plan of action. So I know this is another thing that you hear a lot on the national wake up call from me is um, personal development and how it's so critical in people's success. And I, I remember thinking like, oh, I can do that. Like just read 20 minutes a day, 10 minutes a day and like success will be mine. <laughs> And um, it's not that way. <laughs> That's not how it works. I just didn't get what they meant. Um, I think what I, what I learned that I didn't realize is that personal development is critical for two reasons. One, I think it's critical for motivation to keep filling your cup up because we all have those tough times in our life where we're not feeling very motivated. Um, and I think it's also particularly critical for new coaches. Like in your first three to six months, I think that you don't, unless you are really struggling with a specific skill, I think learning to stay motivated through this tough time and through this challenging time is the most important type of personal development to read. But beyond that, I think it's really important to um, be working on a skill specifically. You know, where I think this business can be, you know, broken down kind of into three little sections if we're going to talk specifics in a business. Marketing, so like the funneling of bringing in new people. Um, closing and sales, so actually taking those people and turning them into a customer. And then leading those people, like leading and training and beyond. So once you get past that point of like you just need motivation, I think for me, I needed to look at my business and see where my weakest link was and start working on that. So for me, that is in marketing. I think my weakest link is, how, is reaching more people, bringing more people to me. Um, and so I have, my focus is to dive into social media and really understand social media marketing so that I can reach more people and connect with more people. Um, but my takeaway on this whole like PD plan of action is to actually have two books going. Um, make sure you have a book that you can turn to for motivation when you need it and a book that you are using to work on and specifically improve a skill that you can measure in yourself that you can say like for me it's like okay I need to get better at bringing people to me. How can I do that? I'm going to do that by reading you know this jab 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 right hook by Gary Vaynerchuk, and I'm going to learn and hone my skill and master social media. That is my plan. And um, so that's my number four. And, and as I said, my plan, of, and my plan of action for you is to find two books. Have two books on the go. If you're feeling good and you don't need motivation, focus on the skill one. <laughs> Sorry if I'm talking fast. I'm nervous. Oh, I'll take a breath. Um, okay, so my last really thing awesome, that I want to... Awesome, Bria. I'm, <laughs> I'm learning a lot. <laughs> Sorry that my, uh, my kid keeps, like, coming. <laughs> oh, that's okay. I don't mind. I'm I'm you're, you're doing great. Okay. Lots and lots of good nuggets, and I love that there's clear, like, steps and action items that you can take home and, and implement because it gives us a window into your day, which is amazing. And you... When you, it's funny when you talk um, and you mention, you know, other top coaches, yada, 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 you got to remember you're a top coach and like you are walking it, you are doing it. You are all these things that like we admire, respect and whatever. That's you. That's your life. It's really cool. So I hope everybody on the team, you know, that we all feel that way too, by the way. And everybody that's listening, you can do these things. 
these things you anyone can do. They're so easy that you, they're easy to do and they're easy to miss. And that's what I think is hard is like, or that's why people get stuck with coaching. Anyway, I'm going to, I'll mute back. I totally agree with you. Um, it's yeah, easy. To, it's like, yeah, the, the last, my last takeaway kind of, I think maybe touches on that. It's, um, to make note of what you fell in love with in this business. Um, I know that I fell in love with the feeling I had when I finally felt like I found something that worked for me with a group that supported me and like the feeling of unshackled relief I had from body image issues, from um, not knowing what I wanted in my life, like all these things. That was what I really fell in love with. And I continue to fall in love with the connections that I get to make with the people um, in my life. And I think it's really important to, to get clear on what that is for you, what it is that brought you here, what it is that excites you. Because this is, as I said in the beginning, you need to commit. I think you need to commit for life. This is a long-term relationship. This is not a one-night stand. <laughs> So you need to be monogamous with it. You know, um, obviously you're going to have your family and the love people in your life that you love that are going to need to take priority in your life. You may have a career already that obviously needs to take priority because of income to support your family. But aside from that, you know, you need to have things for you, but I still think it's really important to be monogamous. Focus your energy on making this successful and dabble in other little bits and everything for now, really give the love that this deserves um, and watch, you know, watch what you can create, watch it flourish. Um, nurture the passion that you have for it. You know, like for me, because I think finding, um, cause those two things really are what I fell in love with the connecting with other people and the, um, the, the feeling I got from finally respecting and being kind to myself. I, it's really important to me that I nurture those things and I'm always nurturing the relationships in my team and then the people, my peers and everyone that I meet that I really like to spend time with. And it's also really important for me to really enjoy my workouts, to always make time for that in my life. So nurture the passion that brought you here in the first place and have patience like any long-term relationship you know, there's sacrifices you have to make, there's respect you have to give, and you have to be patient that, that, that it will continue to grow and flourish if you're making the right decisions and you're doing the right thing. So my action item on that is just to block schedule time in your life for what brought you here in the first place. Um, and that is it. I think I, one more little thought I had kind of at the end of all this when I was preparing it was just, I think just to remind you that, it, you know, all like last at the leadership retreat, I remember Doug Moss saying at the beginning, this is like checkers. Um, it's not particularly like, it's just not as strategic. It's very simple. You need to hit success club. You need to make new connections there. You know, it's a very simple game of checkers in that sense with those simple activities. It does get more complicated and more of like a game of chess. I think as you grow as a leader and grow into the higher ranks and I'm so in that sense, it gets more challenging, but I think at the end of the day, it gets easier. Like it's, I know that there are times that are really hard and I still have days where I'm like, I'm just, I'm just done. Like I just need a break. I need to step away. I need to not look at social media anymore. You know, like there's things that I go through and I know all of you guys can relate to that or you feel like you're not connecting with people or you're not getting your message out or all of these things. But at the end, I really do feel like you should know it gets easier. After that first six months to a year, it does get easier, especially if you're reminding yourself what you love about this. So um, if you're having a tough day, stay strong, have faith, reach out, um, and nurture what you love. And that's it. That was a lot of talking. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was perfect. Oh, I, yeah. I completely agree with everything. With what you said, and it's so true. It's like anything. Like if you were to start any new job, the first three to six months is really, really awkward. And it's like being a new parent, changing that diaper the first time, that's really awkward. You do 20 and you're a pro. So um, thank you so much, Bria. If anybody has any questions they want to ask or if you had an aha moment, feel free to share. We love when you do that. Because <laughs> then it's not like we were just talking to ourselves. <laughs> um, you might want to read that later. I will, maybe I'll.